Sharks are amazingly amazing ancient creatures, but let's be honest, how they get busy. Hey guys, Trace here for D News. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm here with Dr. Luis Rocha from the California Academy of Sciences here in San Francisco. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We're here to talk a little bit about shark sex. We know that sharks, they're, they're ancient, they're fish, they have scales. We, we've learned this throughout the years doing Shark Week stuff. But they are also both egg-laying, so oviparous, and also viviparous, or right. live birth, correct? Right. So there's a big diversity of sharks out there, more than 400 species, and some of them lay eggs, and the eggs develop outside of the shark, and then they eclode into little pups, and some of them, the egg eclode inside the shark, and then develops, and then they give birth to live little pups. So most fish, when you think of fish, you think about a tuna mm -hmm. that lays millions of eggs. Right. And then all the eggs eclode into tiny little larvae. The, the sharks, they use a different strategy. They invest a lot of energy in their eggs and their pups to make sure that when they're born, they're born in a big size and they escape a lot of predation. So they're not as vulnerable to predation as the tiny little larvae of the tuna floating out in the open ocean. Okay, so there's like an evolutionary advantage for them to take care of their, their pups and right. make sure that they can survive. Right. In, uh, in, in nature in general, a lot of uh, predators use that strategy. They invest more in their offspring and they have bigger offspring, they have parental care sometimes, sharks usually don't. They have fewer offspring also because they have smaller populations. So predators, you can't have a lot of predators because there's not a lot of food for them, so they're limited by their food. Mm. How is it that, you know, sharks kind of get, you know, how do they do it? Something else unusual about sharks. So most fish, they have what we call external fertilization. So they lay their eggs out in the water. The males come back and then they lay the, the sperm out. They mix in the water externally. Mm -hmm. And that's where the eggs form. Sharks, they have internal fertilization. Okay. And, uh, and male sharks have two penises. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's, that's a surprise? Yeah, some species, they even bite one another. So the males, they bite the sides of the female and they have internal fertilization. And that's okay. the eggs and the, the pups develop inside the females, depending on which species it is. So the shark isn't necessarily, even the oviparous sharks aren't necessarily laying eggs and then waiting for someone to come along nope, and fertilize yes. them. So what about parthenogenesis? Can they be born pregnant and or have like a virgin birth, if you will? Right, right. The females, when they spend a long time isolated from males, when they don't have any contact with males, they can produce clones of themselves, basically, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and give birth to other little females, and that's uh, parthenogenesis. Hmm. So that's one of the things that allowed them to survive so long in, in evolutionary, evolutionary histories, because they have all of these different strategies, so when they can't find a mate, they can give birth to clones and just keep the species going. If they mate once with a male, they can store that sperm for a long time and then keep using it. Right, yeah. We were discussing the brown banded bamboo shark, which can store sperm for how long? Yeah, almost five years. That's crazy. Yeah. A woman can store sperm in her vagina for like five days, right? roughly. So right. five years is just, that's insane to yes. me. So my guess is evolutionarily this would come about because they're either isolated or for mate selection even? It is actively being studied too, but we're not sure. Some males, they have better sperm than other males. Right. Even when it's stored together with the sperm of other males, the, the sperm from the better males, it lives longer. Yeah. How did you guys discover that this was going on? Right, right. So that was an interesting story. As the, I think it was the first project that was given when I arrived at the academy. The folks at the Steinhardt Aquarium, they came to me at the Skiers case, so they had kept those three female brow bending bamboo sharks in the tank for almost five years. And they always laid eggs and the eggs were never uh, viable um, because there were no males around. But then one day, one of the, the eggs became viable. There was a little pup in there and it was born and, uh, and everything. And, and they were like, uh, what is yeah, happening? Everybody was very surprised about it. And I told them immediately to give me a little tissue sample of the pup and of all three mothers so that I could figure out what it was. We did a series of genetic tests that were inconclusive and then we finally did one that looked at hundreds of genes at the same time. And with that test, we found what we call private alleles. It's mm -hmm. um, alleles in the DNA that did not belong to the mother or any of the other females in the tank for that matter and they could only have come from a male. So that's so how you that's knew. That's how we knew that it was sperm storage. Are there other kind of unique sharks? Some sharks, like the bow shark, they have what we call intrauterine cannibalism. 
Oh yeah, I've read that's, about that. That's an interesting one. And so that's freaky. So that's when pups of different uh, fathers or pups will attack each other kind of right. inside of the mother's body. Right, right. This is like a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes uh, a female will get pregnant several times and then all of the eggs, they have a different developmental stages in the uterus. Mm -hmm. And then one pup is born and then he sees all those eggs laying around there and he starts eating them or even smaller pups. Kind of a veering off to a different path here. Sharks are 450 million years old evolutionarily. They've survived five major extinction events. Right. And there is new studies saying that we're hitting a sixth major extinction event. Yeah. Do you think sharks are going to make it through this one? Yeah, I get that question quite a bit and I'm at the same time pessimistic and optimistic. Mm. Um, they made it through five, so I know they're going to make it through a six too. The biggest single threat that sharks are facing today are fisheries. It's humans collecting by, by humans for mostly shark fin soup. They are also caught by bycatch in several different types of fisheries. So right. if everybody, anybody is out there fishing in a long line for tuna, they'll catch shark because the hook is out there, so it will catch the shark too. And that's where their reproduction comes back in and, and closes the, the circle of the story because they don't reproduce like tunas. They do one, two, three, five pups at a time. They're much more vulnerable to fishing than tunas are. Mm -hmm. To end on a, on a happier note, there are populations that are rebounding. Yeah, there are populations that are rebounding. There are initiatives, like in places like Palau, for example, they completely banned shark fishing in the whole island mm -hmm. and they built a shark sanctuary around the, the islands there so that we see the populations rebounding. There's large marine protected areas with big healthy shark populations like the Northwest Hawaiian Islands to mention one or the Great Barrier Reef. So everywhere where we protect the environment we see the populations coming back. Well that's good. Well thanks for coming to talk to us and our audience Thank and uh, please keep studying sharks because I want to know more about this sperm storage stuff and all sorts of other cool things. We do. So thank you for watching everybody. For everything Shark Week here at Discovery, sink your teeth into sharkweek.com or if you want to stick with more D News, click on the shark playlist that we just made for you all. And thanks for watching.